Have you ever asked yourself the question, who am I? It's rather profound, isn't it, to think about that? Who am I? Well, I think in many ways we're the composite of a litany of things, but primarily our experience and, and the innateness of who we are, what the, the gifts we were born with, our genetic makeup. And I think we've learned in time that both the environment we grew up in and our genetic makeup have pretty much shaped who we are. There's a uh, Myers-Briggs test, maybe you're familiar with that. Uh, it's a personality inventory test that you take to try to determine certain aspects of you of your personality. And in one category is whether or not you're an introvert or, or an extrovert. You know, an introvert, you know, processes everything externally. In fact, when they process externally, they get energized. Uh, they get uh, lit up. And an introvert processes everything internally. You know, they, they take it inside and, and they ponder it. Uh, the extrovert is out there and the introvert is in here. And, you know, if you're driving down the road and you're an extrovert and you're talking and you're about where we're going and, and, and you see this and you see that and the introvert's over here, experiencing everything that the extrovert's experiencing, they're just not processing it outside. And, of course, the introvert thinks the extrovert's not interested or bored or tuned out. But the introvert's sitting there thinking, man, this person talks too much, Right. And you get out of the car and the extrovert's energized. They've been talking the whole time. They get out, they're ready to go. The, the, ex, the extrovert's on board. The introvert, on the other hand, is drained. <laughs> they're drained. They're exhausted because the, uh, the extrovert's taking all that energy. Well, take an extrovert child. If they grow up in an environment where children are seen and not heard, and maybe that resonates with you. Maybe you heard that growing up too. Children are seen and not heard. Then that begins to shape them. You take a very extrovert child that wants to process everything outside and they get suppressed. And in that suppression, you know, they're somewhat changed or warped. That's what I'm talking about. So, look, there's a quote I want to I share with you. It's from an anonymous writer, but it's profound. And it kind of talks about who you are, the composite of your makeup. It says this, watch your beliefs, they become your thoughts. Watch your thoughts, they become your words. Watch your words, they become your actions. Watch your actions, they become your habits. Watch your habits, they become your character. Watch your character, it becomes your destiny. You can see that what we think think and process in our head ultimately gets lived out in the life uh, we live. That's what this uh, implies. And this quote gives a wonderful explanation in some terms of how we develop spiritually and emotionally and, and, and psychologically, you know, through our experience and our thought processes. And I'm reminded of Proverbs 4.23. It says, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Or the translation is simply this, what you think is what you become. And that's what this quote implies, that what you begin in the thought press ultimately gives lived out and shapes your life, your habits, and, and so on. And this thought that I'm speaking of causes us to ponder and reflect. Look, there's probably something deeper here uh, in my experience. What shapes our beliefs, our thoughts, our words, our actions, our habits, our character is ultimately who we become, who we become. And ironically, when we contemplate this, it probably takes us deeper into ourselves to ponder and see if there's more there that we've missed or maybe not done because of maybe the environment we, we grew up in or just our genetic composition. And this in and of itself too can become unsettling when you consider this, you know, is there more to it? You know, we want to know the answers to life. We want to know the answers. But too often they, they elude us because of circumstance or, or, or situation. So where are the answers for life? Well, you know, there's, there's a great place to turn to. And I want to highly recommend this. It's called the Bible. I think the Word of God is a place where many of answers uh, to life are, are offered and, and given to us. The, the Word of God. Now listen, you can't hang a day-to-day -day stuff on it, but 
it's there. It's the richness of God's word to your ears to give you direction. So whether you're a child or an adult, the word of God is a great place, even if you're older, to start today, to pick it up and let God speak to you through through his word. In Proverbs 22, verse 6, it says, Bring up a child in the way he should go, so he will not depart from it when he gets older. And look, you're never too young to start learning. So if you've been thinking about that question, who am I? You know, look in the mirror and realize three things. You're a child of God, created in his image, and, and he loves you very much. How much? He sent his only begotten son to die for you on that cross to redeem you so you can become part of the family of God. And thirdly, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you are right now a temple of the Holy Spirit where God indwells. And let me tell you what, the Spirit of God in you will speak to you. When you pray, he will guide you and direct you. As you read the Word of God, he will open up perhaps portions of Scripture you've, you've never seen before. So if you've had this question rattling around in your head, who am I? I want to encourage you right now to think about turning to God's Word and using it as a source to give you some affirmation, to affirm you in God's love for you, to let him pour his peace out, to, to give you hope, to fill you with the joy of the Lord, and to raise a bar of faith in you to be able to trust and believe in him as your Lord and Savior. I hope this has been helpful. You know, if you want to reach out to me, uh, go to my website, Paul Teske Ministries. There's a prayer page there. You can hit the prayer button and send me your prayer requests. I get them all day long, and I answer every one of them myself right now. Secondly, if you want to give me a comment on the Facebook page, hit the comment section. Write a comment. I'll respond to that. If you want to go to my YouTube at Paul Teske Ministries page, I've got over 200 teachings now for you on a litany of subjects. There's testimonies and, and conferences. But I'm doing all this for one reason. That's to sow into your life to help you perhaps even answer this question, who am I? Okay? So I want you to go in peace, and I want you to serve the Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen?